This is Athletes Lives Network exclusive interviews. Today our guest is superstar, talented, cornerback Ty Tarden, Beloit Turner High School, Northern Iowa University, Detroit Lions. How you doing, Ty? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Doing a good job. And basically, man, we want to get your, your history of, of, of you, you know what I'm saying, your early influences in sports, your high school days, your college days, as well as your pro days, and what kind of information can you give future athletes to help them be motivated in athletics? So the first question is, just start off by telling us uh, who you are, where you're from, and your early influences in sports. Um, Ty Talton, um, I grew up in Beloit, Wisconsin. Um, had two older brothers, um, seven and eight years apart. I was, the, I was the youngest one, so I had two older brothers that were great athletes, and just being able to go to their, their football games, their basketball games, they were track athletes, and just being able to watch them perform just kind of instilled in me that I had, I had to do something in sports because, you know, when you, when you got two older brothers that, that are great athletes, it inspires you to try to be great. So um, just, you know, over, over the years, just um, working hard, trying to strive to be better than them, Help me become the athlete I am today. Now you, you say you had two other brothers. Now what, what did your two other brothers play? What sports? What, what? Yeah, I had two other brothers, um, Anthony and Travis Talton. Um, they were predominantly football players, but they played all the sports growing up in high school. They ran track, they played basketball, they played football. Um, one had a try with the Packers and one had a try with the Bears that um, ultimately didn't end up making it to the final cut, but did a good job. Okay. Now with all that, all that glory from your two brothers, did you feel pressured in, into playing sports? Or did you have a free reign just to go do what you wanted to do? I didn't feel pressured. I, I, I felt honored more than it be. Um, it was one of the things where, you know, um, I like to, first of all, thank God that, you know, gave me some God-given talent that I was just naturally good at certain things. And it was kind of a blessing that, you know, things started to come to me at a young age where, you know, you can't teach speed. And not to say I was the fastest person, but I was, I was pretty quick as a, as a kid. And then naturally, you know, you start to work on uh, work on your skill, work on your game. and. Over the years, I found myself pretty good, you know, at football, pretty good at basketball, and, and pretty good at track. So I, f I decided to follow my brother's footsteps and, and you know, try to be an all-sport athlete. What peers did you grow up competing against, or was there any peers that was better than you at, at, at your young age that you wanted to be? Um, mostly, you know, it wasn't really a whole lot of peers. I, I kind of um, gauged myself with my older brothers, like I said. I kind of looked at their records, looked at their milestones, and that's what I shot for at, at a young age, saying, you know what, when I grew up, I wanted to be better than what they were. Gotcha. Now, now as far as middle school, did you play any sports in middle school? Uh, middle school, yep. Um, I played basketball, played um, football, um, ran track, the basic middle school sports. Okay. Now, give us your mind state going going into Beloit Turner High School as a freshman. What 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 kind of goals did you want to accomplish as a freshman? Um, as a freshman, it's, it's kind of funny. Be my story is a little different. I I was a, a hooper. You know, I didn't think I'd ever play football. Um, okay. My first love was basketball. You know, everyone wanted to be Michael Jordan. You know, growing up as a kid, I grew up in Beloit. You know, about an hour and a half from Chicago. You know, in the Michael Jordan area. Everyone looked up to Mike, so basketball was my life. Um, kind of crazy. I never went to a football camp. I only went to basketball camps. And when it's all said and done, I ended up playing, you know, being blessed to play professional football. So it's, it's just kind of crazy how it worked out. So what transitioned you over to football as a freshman? You know, because like you said, you played basketball. That that was the number one sport. But what transitioned you over to playing football? Um, it was kind of crazy. My from a, pretty much my first three years of high school, from you know my freshman, my my sophomore to my junior year, I was still predominantly wanted to play basketball, where um, I went to a, a, a smaller high school, you know, in the, in the kind of in the suburbs. Um, my parents moved us out of the city um, and, and put us into a, um, a kind of a suburban school um, for a better education. Um, they wanted to make sure it just wasn't all about sports with us, uh, you know, that I would go to college, get a college degree, and, and become something just in case sports didn't work out for us, which is a blessing. Um, so my first three years, it was all about basketball, but I, I kind of noticed that naturally, um, I was a little bit better at football. You know, I just, the basketball part, you know, the desire and the love was there, but all around, I think I had a better chance of playing at a higher level at football. And then, you know, talking to my coach, talking to my guidance counselor, they just thought I should pursue a, a career in football. And that's kind of when the transition happened about my junior year, going into my senior year, that I started to look at football in a more serious manner. Now you're entering your senior season. Um, can give us your mind state on your goals that year. You know, you just said that you was, was going to going to um, pursue a career in football. Now give us your mind state. Yeah, going to my senior year, you know, I wasn't like I said, I went to a smaller high school, so I wasn't 
I'm not going to say highly recruited, but at the same time, I didn't have a ton of school knockers on my door because the coach was telling people I wanted to play basketball instead of playing football at, at a Division One level. So going into my senior year, I started to focus a little bit more on football, watch a little bit more game film, and naturally, I think, just started to be a little bit more serious about football instead of basketball. Um, senior year was okay. Well, I'm not going to say it was great, but it was okay. We went to the playoffs and ended up losing in the first round and stuff. So, you know, started to get some, some, some looks at some college schools and some different offers. But like I said, I still kind of had that, that little part of me that still wanted to play basketball. But most of the basketball offers were all Division II. And like I told my parents, I wanted to take the highest scholarship. And when it was all said and done, Northern Iowa came to the table and they gave me an opportunity to play on Division I football, Division I AA football, and then also play Division I basketball. So that was one of the things I was looking to do. And so that's why I took the offer to Northern Iowa. I got you. Now, now let's kind of backtrack real quick. Now, you say you took the offer to Northern Iowa to play football and basketball. What? What big name schools was was coming to look at you, or was or what schools? Period. Um, you know, growing up in Wisconsin, I think everybody wanted to go to Wisconsin, and I was leaning towards going to Wisconsin, and and really thought that might work out. But um, the number one um, athlete in the state at that time was Donald Hayes, and he ended up signing with Wisconsin. He was a hometown kid that grew up in, in Madison, so he ended up staying there. So they wanted me to walk on, and and my big goal was I had two older brothers that weren't able to get scholarships athletically wise. I think they they had the ability, but their academics wasn't, in, you know up to par at the time, so they didn't end up getting full ride scholarships to any major colleges. So I told my parents I didn't want them to have to pay for school. So when the opportunity to Northern Iowa came around, and it gave me the opportunity, like I said, to be a dual sport athlete, I, I jumped on it. Gotcha. Now you was voted to play in the, um, the Shriners game. Um, give us that, that, that whole experience. It, it was a great experience. Like I said, any kid that gets the opportunity to play in an all-star game, to, to mount to to take your talents and, and measure them up against all the all the great athletes around the state, whatever state you're in, I think you should definitely take advantage of it. I learned a lot. Um, you know, it's a week of practice, and then you get to, to play in this all-star game. Great experience. You know, I got to measure myself up against some of the other athletes that were going to school. I actually met some kids that were actually going to my same college at the time. So just an overall great experience, and I, I wouldn't change anything. Now you signed a letter to the play at the University of Northern Iowa. Um, Give us your, your thoughts and your goals as a, as a freshman going to a university in Northern Iowa. When I was born in Northern Iowa, it was, you know, you, you're finally going to be on your own. You get to get out of your mom and dad's, you know, your home, and you're going to be an adult for once. So I think it was an experience. For me. It was a learning experience for me, you know, to, to move three hours away from away from home, away from my parents, and, and become an adult. And going in at the time, Northern Iowa had two senior cornerbacks that were all-conference and, and great corners. So I knew going in, it was most likely going to be a redshirt year for me, and I was fine with that because I think just physically, mentally adept into college and, you know, the, the overall being adult, you know, having you don't worry about your parents, you know, having someone wake you up in the morning, having someone telling you where you need to be. Like I said, just become an adult, and I think the transition, it was good for me to take that year and just, you know, work on myself, work on my academics, like I said, it, it, which is a huge thing, in, you know, in this day and age, where if your if your academics aren't right, sports don't matter. So it was it was good for me to to be able to get my grades right and be ready to play football. Now, now you also was playing basketball. Give us your experience as a freshman basketball player. Um, it was great. Like I said, I had a very good time. The only difference is it was a little weird transition because, like I said, I was on a full ride football scholarship, but the opportunity to play basketball where. Technically, I was somewhat of a walk-on, but didn't have to um, compete to, to be able to play. Um, so I went in and I was behind the eight ball because those guys had been training for basketball for, for all year. And then I would come in after playing football and and try to try to make that transition. So for the first two or three months, I think it was a more conditioning thing and just trying to get back in the flow. And these guys have been playing basketball year-round. So but overall, like I said, I wouldn't change anything about it. I love my experience, experience playing basketball in Northern Iowa and had a great time. Gotcha. Now let's go to your um, next year in college, which is your red shirt freshman year. Um, you had a breakout game against Iowa University. Give us experience on that. Um, you know, being a one double A school, you, you get to you don't get to sometimes to play the bigger schools, the Big Ten schools, the SEC schools. We were fortunate enough to open up against um, University of Iowa, where you know. Growing up as a kid, you like you like to play in front of the TVs and the limelight, and I was blessed enough to to have one of my best games of my career against the University of Iowa. Even though we didn't win the game um, individually, I put up some great stats. I ended up with um, three interceptions and, and overall a great day. Wow! So now after that game, I'm sure the whole nation knew who Ty Tall was. 
Now, how did you deal with that new, new exposure? You know, it was, it, was, it was funny because it kind of, like I said, put me on the map. That was one of the things that started to open up people's eyes, scouts' eyes, the paper's eyes, you know, people around Iowa's eyes and around the nation like you, like you talked about. So I think it took a little little adjustment, you know. You can't let the limelight go to your head. You just got to keep continue to work hard, con continue to study, and continue just to become an overall better player. Okay. Now, how do you finish the rest of your season out with Richard? Um, rest of the freshman year went good for me. You know, I, I, I had one of my better seasons. I think I finished with um, about seven interceptions after that great year, and we ended up going to the playoffs and uh, making a run within the playoffs. So it was overall a great year, a, a great rest of the freshman year. Okay. Now let's touch on your so sophomore year. Um, now the whole country know who Ty Talton is. Now what's your experiences going in as a sophomore year and your goals? Um, goals I set in the summer is just to, to come out, be consistent first of all, you know, that's the biggest thing. You get some of these guys that come out and they, they have great one years but can't do it year in and year out. And I think my goal was in the summer to, to train harder than I ever trained, to, to take, you know, take that extra step, study more film, and just like I said, have a, a great sophomore year instead of you hear about that sophomore slump. And came out and I think I, think I proved that and I think I did that and I ended up being an All-American. Now, not only was you an uh, All-American defensive back, but you also was an exceptional kick returner. I'm going to give you experiences on, on being a kick returner. Yeah, kick return. You know, a lot of people don't don't like kick return, and and that's one thing I enjoyed. Anytime as a defensive player, and you know, a lot of kids in high school, everyone a lot of times play both ways. You you know, you play a little, you play a little offense, you play a little defense. And me going on going in and being a defensive back, that was my time to touch the ball, and that was my time to shine. Where there's nothing like being able to take the life out of a game when a defensive back can return a kick and, and get the crowd into it and change and change the whole atmosphere of a game. So it was one of the things like I enjoyed and I, I think I was actually pretty good at. Okay. Now, you had a great freshman season, the rest of your freshman year. You was all American sophomore. Now what is the pressure of coming to be a, um, a junior at Northern Iowa University? Everybody know who you are. Everybody's targeting you in games. Now what's your mind staying your goal and also you had a um, coaching change. And, and that was the big thing. You know, you, you come into a college and you get recruited by a certain coaching staff and you get comfortable and, and you come in and you have two outstanding years and you know, you're coming off an of All-American season and, and, and the papers are talking and the scouts are starting to, you know, come around and the buzz is out there about you. And then your coaching staff, after the, the great, you know, the great run that we've had, Gets, gets an opportunity to go to coach at Kansas. So my coaching staff leaves and go to Kansas and we get a new coaching staff from Toledo. Mike Dunbar brings his staff in. So now you gotta go through a whole defensive scheme change and just adapt into a new coaching style. A little struggle at first, I think, because you know, um, conditional wise, I was fine. I trained harder than I ever trained. Um, mentally, I was ready. I studied more film than I ever studied, um, ready to play. But then it's adapting to a new scheme, trying to adapt to a new coaching style. So I, overall, I think the, the season went pretty well. Um, I'll probably give myself a, a B minus, you know, coming off a, 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 a plus and, a, and an A minus um, freshman, redshirt freshman year. So I'll probably give myself a B minus. But overall, you know, okay season. Now that year, I was I was a true freshman, and I remember uh, I had the opportunity. I was lucky enough to be able to travel. Um, that year, you was touted as one of the best defensive backs in the nation and uh, you had an opportunity to go, go to the NFL. Uh, what made you stay uh, um, for your next senior, senior season? Um, <laughs> actually staying was probably one of my one of my wrong decisions but um, you know you, you can't go back and change back time but one of the things I was looking at I was touted to be a first um, first first or second round pick at, um, coming out from my junior season but me being the competitor that I am wanted to, wanted to be a top 10 a top 15 pick so I felt like if, if I worked that much harder over the summer and, and got that much stronger, that much faster, studied that much more film and had a great senior season like everyone was saying, that I could easily be a top 15 pick. So that was my decision process of staying for my senior year. Okay. So now going to your senior season, um, you, know, you guys won conference seven years in a row. Um, but now under Mike, uh, Coach Mike Dunbar's system, it's the first year you guys won conference. What did that do for the team uh, mentality? I, although I know he was bringing in his, his recruits, you know, you, you still had some veterans on that team that played under Coach Allen. Uh, it was very difficult because, like I said, you know, 
And, you know, coming coming into Northern Iowa, one thing you knew is that you would be going to the playoffs. You'd most likely win conference. They were on, I want to say, about an eight or nine year run of being, you know, conference champions, going to the playoffs and going deep into the playoffs and, you know, fighting for a national championship. So when when the new regime came in, it was, it was a little different because my junior year, you know, even though I had a good season, we did not make the playoffs. So I think that's a reflection on yourself at times because you, you look in the mirror and you say, hey, what's different? You know, we, we broke this, this this championship run. So going to the senior season, you know, you, you try to see what you can do better, see what you can help the team, see what things you can change to get you back on that winning track. And um, senior season, once again, it didn't happen again. Um, with the new coaching change, we just didn't, you know, just didn't get it on track early. We struggled early out the gates, um, finished very strong, but at that time we just weren't, you know, record wasn't good enough to make it to the playoffs.